I've wanted to take a look at Langley Point for a while now and historically it's been a hugely productive mark and I'm glad I got to fish it this week and gleam a lot of information from some of the locals. It sits to the east of Eastbourne and just to the west of Sovereign Harbour. Uh, if you're coming by car head for the Sovereign Roundabout, that's the big one by the Leisure Centre and then take the exit for Prince William Parade. And here you'll find a couple of car parks that lead directly down to the mark, so you won't be uh, walking far. Good catches can be made uh, along here between any of these groins. A uh, case of finding a little space can get very busy. And you can actually see Eastbourne in the distance there. The a little bit further on towards a point you've got Harbour Reach car park. And then here is another car park right at the end by those double roundabouts. There's quite a bit of development here, but what I would suggest is you don't pay for parking. Use your money to buy some tackle and just park near one of these local roads. One of the ones without the double yellow lines. There's a few here. You haven't got a very long walk from there at all. And it's right at this point and you're right onto this mark here. However, I wouldn't go out on the breakwater there. Uh, it's quite slippery, a bit dodgy, particularly in bigger tides. Uh, but there should be plenty of space on the beaches and you can still get really good access there to um, the deeper water. So what we're looking at here is the Sovereign Harbour. Another alternative is head to the Western Harbour Arm. Uh, you can get definitely get onto the deep water from there. The only problem you're going to have there is with the boat traffic coming in and out of the harbour. So you're sort of taking your pick really. And we'll come on to the fish you might catch and I'll have a little go in a minute and you can see where you might want to fish along here. Now another option is actually to fish inside the harbour. It's not really the done thing, uh, although you are away from the boats here and some of those little muddy gullies there look uh, really good holding spots for flounder for example. So you can see the advantage of fishing the harbour. Um, you've obviously got the deep water that's in range and then you can fish either sides. And what we're looking at here is a February day so you can imagine what it's like in, in summer. Uh, a couple of the anglers I spoke to forewarned me about this. So definitely consider the dawn or dusk fishing or even do a bit of night fishing. Although the tide will push hard at times, you can still get away with two or three ounces uh, in calmer, smaller tides. Uh, I actually used a little bass flatty rod here, three ounce rod. But UK fishing being as it is, <laughs> you probably need a beach caster and 12 pound line, tapered leaders as well. Uh, as far as the rigs go, um, a lot of people suggesting clipped uh, loop rigs, the Portsmouth rig. Uh, you can still use your normal three hook flappers but particularly for the place you want to get that long flowing rig out there as well. And you can always take a look at our rig tying guides, there are plenty on this channel. Distance casting is a good advantage here, uh, it can put you in amongst the fish in the deeper water. Uh, the place particularly, they do like that clear water as well the place. And there you go, I did manage a couple of small little place while I was here, certainly uh, didn't which was quite nice, I didn't blank. Lots of other species throughout the year as well. In spring you've got your place. Dogfish can be caught here as well. Uh, codling, maybe. <laughs> During the summer there's place, dogfish, mackerel, bass, uh, mullet and smooth hound. Mackerel fishing can get a bit ridiculous to be honest. Uh, autumn, whiting, those Dover sole. So in winter, whiting, dabbing, and even codling becoming a bit more of a rarity now. Uh, the bass here are apparently best tackled over a big spring tide, um, like a lot of places along this stretch of coast. Um, maybe try and fish the last couple of hours of the flood and then into about an hour of the ebb. Give yourself the best chance with a big juicy peeler crab. So your number one bait probably be a uh, lugworm, a lot of people suggesting that. And then if you can get maddies, harbour rag as well, and I'd really like you to subscribe to the channel. You can click the uh, bell icon to be notified. And we've got another fishing vlog next Friday.